As beautiful and magical as the classic Disney princess films are, it isn't exactly news that the female leads were about as flat as the paper they were drawn on. I mean, the formula was simple. Really pretty girl who can also sing, girl wants to be with really hot guy, girl gets herself into a mess, guy has to save her, and they end up living happily ever after. Then tons of merchandise is sold and shoved down our throats. <clears throat> Frozen, that formula changed with the release of Beauty and the Beast. Of course, it featured a single parent, an evil villain, and our traditional ingenue. This one, a little more progressive than the princesses that preceded her. Take me instead. Heal. But what about Prince Charming? Um, Sapphire, what are you talking about? Obviously, the Beast is Prince Charming. I mean, it's in the title, Beauty and the Beast. Not so fast, Emily. I wouldn't be so quick to label the Beast as a prince and Gaston as the villain. Maybe there's more to them than meets the eye. Was Gaston's death in Beauty and the Beast symbolic of this new Disney era? So, according to this theory, Gaston actually isn't the villain, but a classic Disney prince. He's handsome, if you're into that look, independently wealthy, everyone loves him for some reason, and he only wants a princess because she's super hot. But aside from being a total D-bag, Gaston actually never really harmed anyone. He was just doing what he believed he was supposed to do, marry the most beautiful girl in town and start a family. And when he heard that his future wife was being held prisoner by some beast, he rallied the whole town to go save her. But unlike the princesses that preceded her, Belle didn't want or need to be saved. She ended up choosing Beast, which by the way, I think is hilarious that she calls him that. Like his name is Adam, don't be rude. Uh, sorry, uh, if you don't mind, uh, pretentious Disney nerd moment. The Beast's real name isn't really Adam. In the actual Disney film, he wasn't given a name at all. The name Prince Adam was actually created for the computer game and then later used again in the Broadway musical. Anyway, carry on. Okay. Whether or not this was a conscious effort on behalf of the writers, this theory makes a lot of sense. If you look at The Little Mermaid, the princess movie released two years earlier, the female lead literally could not speak or stand up for herself, and all her desires revolved around a man she had never met, which is straight up stalker status. And the princesses long before that, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, all needed a man for their happily ever after. Okay, you might have a point there, because the princesses that followed Beauty and the Beast, Jasmine, Mulan, and Pocahontas, all wanted new worlds and new riverbends. They all still ended up with men, but this time around, they actually had believable reasons for liking them. Okay, Sapphire, you have me pretty convinced. But let's see if this conspiracy actually makes sense. Could Gaston really be the metaphorical death of Prince Charming? In order to debunk this, let's try and get into the mind of Gaston. Um. I'm a vegetarian. Can I be excused? Fine, I'll take over this part. Imagine, it's the 18th century in a small village in the French countryside. A quaint village, but probably not a wealthy one. They obviously have a royal family, which no one seems to really know or care about their whereabouts for like 10 years. But you are Gaston. You live a relatively simple life. You're a master hunter, an excellent sportsman, and basically the most popular guy in town who can get anything he wants. Things are going pretty great for you until the girl you like rejects your marriage proposal, leaving you totally embarrassed. And then just a few days later, she's abducted by this strange monster. So everything in your tiny little world is falling apart and you have to fix it in any way you can. Okay, wait, are you serious? Seriously trying to defend Gaston right now? Well, no. Gaston is still a conceited D-bag, and he has no excuse for trying to throw Belle's dad into an asylum in order to get her to marry him. But if your entire life revolves around hunting and wooing chicks, an unknown creature stealing your girl is as bad as it gets. All right, fair enough. I get where you're coming from or rather where Gaston is coming from, but I still think he's a selfish jerk whose main motive was to kill the creature that Belle chose over him. And he even attempted to kill the beast again after he spared his life, which are two really not great things in my book. So maybe we can agree to disagree on this point. But now let's talk about how Gaston is different from every other Disney villain that came before and after him. If you look at some of the most iconic Disney villains like Ursula Maleficent and the Evil Queen from Snow White, they all look straight up evil. Gaston was the first villain to be portrayed as handsome. And if we look at the Walt Disney Animation Studios that follow Beauty and the Beast, from Aladdin all the way to Frozen, many of these antagonists have very clear, villainous motives. Usually it's power hungry like Scar, Jafar, Ursula, and Yzma, or craving revenge like Hades, or just plain greedy like Clayton or Governor Radcliffe, but not all of them were clearly villains. What about Hans, who tricked us all? 
If only there was someone out there who loved you. Or Mother Gothel, who is manipulative and raised Rapunzel as her mother. I think that ever since Beauty and the Beast, the Disney villains have become more complex and more realistic. So I agree with you, Sapphire. I think Gaston really was the metaphorical death of the stereotypical Prince Charming and Disney villain. So on the plausibility meter, I give the Gaston theory four and a half Lumieres out of five. Uh, glad you came around, Emily. I give this theory 4.5 floating dying roses. Here is what you guys thought of this conspiracy. RJ Respico said, This is a very interesting conspiracy. Maybe at the bottom of the cliff there was water. Hmm, and maybe Gaston comes back as the winter soldier. Eh? Yeah? Mr. Chad990 wrote, It looks like we're going to, puts on glasses, be your guest for this episode. Hell yeah. Francis Wilfred Borda Alaang wrote, Well, the beast's name wasn't revealed, right? So what if the beast is the real Gaston and the villain Gaston is just his doppelganger? Whoa, this conspiracy just got a whole lot crazier. Mad scientist Quasop said, Interesting, maybe the beast is a symbol for the newer princes who aren't perfect in every way. And Belle would be the new princesses who care more about personality and less about physical traits. I think you might be right. Disney is finally lowering the bar on their high prince princess standards. Maybe it's something we can all finally aspire to but probably not. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Cartoon Conspiracy. Thank you to Sapphire for helping me host this episode. In the comments, let us know what you thought of this theory and if you agree or disagree with us. If you guys have any suggestions for conspiracies you'd like us to cover, send us an email, write in the comments, or even make us a video and we might feature it. Make sure you guys join the channel Frederator Network and subscribe to channel Frederator and I'll see you guys next week.